Good morning. Today is the first Foundations video on Reconnaissance writ large. This will be a doctrinal grounding and exploration of the basics of reconnaissance and will provide a framework for further work that we present, with the end goal being a connection of the Foundations of Warfare, of which reconnaissance is critical, with the tactical missions undertaken by our reconnaissance teams. The joint definition of reconnaissance is this. Reconnaissance is a mission to obtain, by visual observation or other detection methods, information about the activities and resources of an enemy or adversary, or to secure data concerning the meteorological, hydrographic, or geographic characteristics of a particular area. By conducting reconnaissance, the commander is able to continuously modify the adopted course of action to position U.S. forces to be employed most effectively in defeating the enemy. There are seven fundamentals of reconnaissance. The easiest way to remember the seven fundamentals is the acronym R Red Dog, or R Red Dog, your choice. These stand for report all information rapidly and accurately, retain freedom of maneuver, ensure continuous reconnaissance, develop the situation rapidly, do not keep reconnaissance assets in reserve, orient on the reconnaissance objective, and gain and maintain enemy contact. Report all information rapidly and accurately. In an effective unit, commanders develop plans and make decisions based on their analysis of information collected by subordinate units. These decisions at a brigade level are tied to decision points. Decision points are associated with LTIOVs for those items. An LTIOV is the last time information is of value. For example, the brigade commander knows that our brigade, 2nd Brigade 25th ID, is about to be attacked by a motorized rifle battalion tactical group belonging to an unnamed resurgent Northern Hemisphere superpower. The American Brigade Commander has identified two major routes along which this battalion tactical group might move for their assault. He wants to set his defense along the infiltration route of the approaching BTG and air assault one of the infantry companies behind the BTG to disrupt the BTG offensive. In order to do so, he, ne he needs to know where all of the helicopter landing zones that can support a company-sized element are located. His staff will establish an LTIOV for that information, and C Troop will get tasked to reconnoiter those HLZs. The LTIOV is the last time that we can send a grid for an acceptable HLZ that the Brigade Commander can use to air assault in the infantry company. If we fail to send the grid by that time, the information is no longer of value. The Commander will be forced to simply integrate that company that would have been used in a spoiling attack into the defense and lose the opportunity to spoil the BTG's attack. Retain freedom of maneuver. Tactical mobility and maneuver fundamentally drive the success of reconnaissance tasks. Reconnaissance forces retain freedom of maneuver by avoiding decisive engagement with a superior force and develop the situation further, consistently, ba consistently balancing the competing requirement to maintain contact with the requirement of retaining freedom of maneuver. If a reconnaissance force is decisively engaged, it means that we are no longer doing our job. We have ceased providing information for the brigade and are now simply unit fighting it out with an enemy without a tactical task to accomplish in doing so. Ensure continuous reconnaissance. Continuous reconnaissance provides commanders with a constant flow of information in close contact with the enemy and civilian populace to identify and seize key terrain, confirm or deny enemy composition, disposition, strength, and courses of action, and provide reaction time and maneuver space for unpredicted enemy actions. For us, this means that once we have visual contact with an NAI, we continue to surveil that area until we either gather the necessary information or are ordered to move on in a change of mission. Develop the situation rapidly. Reconnaissance forces collect on directed reconnaissance objectives while selectively choosing to fight enemy forces to determine intent, disposition, composition, and strength. In our unit's case, this is governed by our engagement criteria. Often in Sea Troop, it is more beneficial to our collection efforts to stay undetected. However, the mounted troops have additional firepower and protection and can fight for information, especially with regards to enemy capabilities. Do not keep reconnaissance assets in reserve. Continuous and focused collection efforts require an efficient mix and redundancy of reconnaissance assets. However, this does not mean to employ all assets simultaneously. Commanders maximize employment of their reconnaissance assets to answer their commander's critical information requirements. The easiest way to think about this is that at all times, all reconnaissance assets have a task and purpose. We are never simply waiting to be assigned one based on enemy action. At the team level, this means employing all optics and sensors that we've brought in with us in a way that they are meant to be employed. Orient on the reconnaissance objective. 
Commanders direct reconnaissance efforts by establishing reconnaissance objectives with a specific task, purpose, and focus. Reconnaissance objectives can be a combination of terrain features, geographic areas, threat, enemy, adversaries, or civil considerations that provide commanders with the necessary information to answer priority intelligence requirements. At the squadron level, the squadron commander arrays his objectives and task organizes his forces. That is, Alpha and Bravo Troop will be assigned objectives that are shorter duration, require greater firepower, and may be of lower priority to the brigade, while C Troop will be assigned reconnaissance objectives that require stealth, low signal and low signature operations of brigade relevance, where compromise is not an option. Of note, compromise is always an option. Failure is always an option. You are the difference between success and failure. Gain and maintain enemy contact. Reconnaissance forces find and sustain contact with the enemy on terms and conditions of their choosing. Once units make contact, reconnaissance forces maintain contact until specific orders are given, a change of mission occurs when disengagement or displacement criteria dictate, or when the unit conducts a reconnaissance handover with another unit. Maintaining contact with the enemy provides real-time information of the enemy's composition, disposition, strength, and actions that allow staff to analyze and make recommendations to the commander based on current intelligence. For the team, this means that we maintain observation of the enemy until we meet displacement criteria, which is provided in the op board. We never break contact with an enemy force unless ordered to do so, or if that force exceeds our disengagement criteria and makes contact with us. No matter what the mission, the fundamentals of reconnaissance are always applied. That said, they are applied in different ways and in a different proportion based on the mission, depending on the commander's guidance. We'll now move forward into the associated concepts that describe reconnaissance. These are reconnaissance techniques, methods, management, and forms, which are also known as reconnaissance missions. Reconnaissance techniques are more applicable at brigade and squadron levels, but it's helpful for us at the tactical level to understand the intent behind our employment. Reconnaissance push and recon reconnaissance pull are different ways of employing reconnaissance forces. Reconnaissance push is using recon assets to confirm or deny planning assumptions to push friendly combat power into position. Recon pull, on the other hand, uses reconnaissance elements to move forward and determine what the correct positions are, how best to employ our combat forces available, and then pulls friendly combat power into position. At the risk of losing some subtlety, reconnaissance push is confirming a plan, while reconnaissance pull is building a plan. There are four reconnaissance methods, mounted, dismounted, aerial, and reconnaissance by fire. The first three are intuitive. Mounted methods work best when time is limited, distances are longer, and more firepower is needed while dismounted forces are better applied for targets requiring stealth and avoiding compromise. Aerial reconnaissance is excellent for gaining basic information in a very short amount of time. In the fourth method, reconnaissance by fire, scouts place direct or indirect fire on positions where there is information on or reasonable suspicion of enemy occupation. The goal is to cause the enemy to disclose their composition, disposition, and willingness to fight. This should be done first with indirect fires and only in accordance with the engagement criteria. There are three types of reconnaissance management that all involve a mixture, or lack thereof, of two different systems. The first is queuing, the integration of one or more types of reconnaissance or surveillance systems to provide information that directs follow-on collecting of more detailed information by another system. An example is a scout team radioing higher to request the Troop Raven to reconnoiter the same NAI that they are observing. Mixing is using two or more different assets to, co to collect against the same intelligence requirement. This could mean employing both a night vision and a thermal optic in collecting against this requirement. Redundancy is using two or more like assets to collect against the same intelligence requirement. For example, two scouts observing an NAI, one using a PVS-14 and the other using a PSQ-20. Both of these are NVGs and thus count as the same capability, hence redundancy. There are five forms of reconnaissance or reconnaissance missions. In our troop, we will focus almost exclusively on area reconnaissance, as we are best equipped for this mission. Additionally, each of these forms should be given its own lesson, so I will only define them broadly in this presentation and reserve follow-on presentations for the most relevant forms. Area reconnaissance is a form of reconnaissance that focuses on obtaining detailed information about the terrain or enemy activity in a prescribed area. An example is a team being sent to reconnoiter an airfield for enemy activity. A zone reconnaissance is a form of reconnaissance that involves a directed effort to obtain detailed information on all routes, obstacles, terrain, and enemy forces within a zone defined by boundaries. An example is our entire troop being pushed into a 2 kilometer wide zone to conduct reconnaissance. 
A route reconnaissance is a directed effort to obtain detailed information on a specified route and all terrain from which the enemy could influence movement along that route. An example would be us reconnoitering a dismounted avenue of approach for an infantry company. A reconnaissance in force is a deliberate combat operation designed to discover or test the enemy's strength, disposition, or reactions, or to obtain other information. This is usually a battalion or higher operation. C Troop does not conduct these missions. Finally, is special reconnaissance. Special reconnaissance is characterized as reconnaissance or surveillance actions conducted as a special operation in hostile, denied, or politically sensitive environments to collect or verify information of strategic or operational significance, employing military capabilities not normally found in conventional forces. These operations are conducted by special operations forces. Maybe someday. In this presentation, we have addressed the following. The definition of reconnaissance, the fundamentals of reconnaissance, the techniques, methods, management, and forms of reconnaissance. It's basically a spur ride preparation, but for a Sea Troop Infantry Scout. Better luck next year, huh? In this presentation, much of the verbiage was taken directly from FM 3-98, Reconnaissance and Security. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. That FM is listed here. Also used was ATP 3-20.98, the Scout Platoon. Send any questions or comments to charlietrooptactics at outlook.com.